Today I show you how to use the private space feature on your Android phone. This feature is available starting with Android 15 and I just updated my phone Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5 here to Android 15 and I want to try the private space to see how it looks like and how it works. You, you can have your environment, your phone with one Google account and then another account, another Google account, it could be in the private space where you have completely separate settings. In a way, it's like having a separate user, but actually the apps in the private space will not be able to run in the background. So you shouldn't have apps that are for messages or medical apps, important apps that you need to get notifications you shouldn't be in the private space because you need to be able to get the notifications from them. But if it's a notes app or some private information, um, notes apps or private information apps, banking apps, they're a pretty good candidate for this kind of banking apps or the notes apps. They are a nice uh, option to have this. So they are, there's one extra layer of protection in case there is something wrong with your phone. That's a separate space that it cannot be accessed from the phone without your without authentication but i will try it for the first time now and see how it actually works i'll try it for the first time now and see how it actually works if it works at all android 15 just updated so it's just updated to android 15 sony xperia 1 mark 5 this is going to be similar on google pixel on other phones it might be a little bit different so you go to settings here and on the settings page you scroll to the in the settings app, scroll all the way down to privacy and under privacy, under the privacy settings here, you will scroll down all the way to private space there, it shows there. And I have to verify it's me, even though the phone is unlocked, I have a fingerprint unlock and it's asking again for safety, I guess. So that's a private space, some kind of animation where you can put an app get it into the private space so I believe you can install any app into this private space and you can unlock the private space for a while and then lock it back in they suggest here to create a uh, create a Google account for your space for your private space so they are not synced automatically with the phone outside so it's basically there's no information leakage you can set a lock for your space to stop other people from opening it but I guess that's your phone so you already have a passcode and a fingerprint lock I'm not sure you can install apps in that space and it's important to know that it's important to know that when you lock your space the apps in the space are stopped so you won't receive notifications from them this is really important this disclaimer here is really important to read so if you need a, if you have critical notifications that you need to receive that's not the place to put the app in and maybe you wouldn't need to use them maybe you wouldn't want to use the private space at all for that but i will try to see how it is now i'll try to set up let's see what setup does setting up the private space this will take a few moments and I'm not, I'm not sure if I want to use a separate Google account. Create a Google account to keep your data private. On the next screen, you can sign into an account. Create a dedicated account to stop data appearing outside. Okay. Synced photos, files, emails, contacts, everything. App downloaded history. Okay. Got it. So here, here I can sign into the Google account or create a new account, create an account. I will, I will sign in or I could skip it. Let's skip it. Okay. So I have to, I have to use it. I won't be able to download games, download apps. Okay, let's I will sign sign in and come back. So that's the account and I press next. And I will paste the password. Enter your password, enter your password and press next. Okay, and it's asking me 
if I want to Ah, it's it's doing this option here, okay. So I'm trying to sign in, okay. It's it's me, allow it. Agree. I guess I have to agree if I want to add it. And I'm adding it now. I got so many notifications for signing in now. Okay, I got so many notifications, I had to clear some of them. And the sync contacts automatically and backup. I don't know what to do now because it's just a private space, so I will not turn it on. So I'm signed in now and there are so many other things here I don't want to do. And it's done. Here I choose a new log for private space. And I can choose a new log or use the screen log. This is going to be interesting. So this is the pin of the phone. So that was the code of the phone, the existing one. So choose a log for your private space. Fingerprint plus pattern, fingerprint plus pin. Current screen log, this is the current one I have. Fingerprint pass plus password. Continue without fingerprint. So I will use the existing existing options. And this is going to be a new pin. Let's try. I enter the pin now, which is not the existing one on the phone. And I entered it once. Confirming your pin by tapping enter is more secure than using confirm. Auto confirm, I don't know what it means. Ah, it's uh, so it will open the screen automatically, or I have to press enter to automat to screen automatically. So auto confirm will automatically get the pin if it's the right length. Like this, you don't really need to know the length of the pin, but if this is off, you have to know the length of the pin also. So that is more secure, but this is more convenient, and it's by default it's enabled. So press next, re-enter the pin. Okay, I re-enter the pin and confirm it. And I have to, I can use even, there is a new setup for a fingerprint. So I could use a specific finger for this. That's interesting. I like that. So I could add another fingerprint, but I will keep just one. So only one finger can unlock this private space. I don't need it. I just set up so to I show you how it works and it's done. Okay, so Okay, how do I open the private space? Where is the private space? After you open the app drawer, at the bottom of the screen you have this place where it says private. So I guess I have to tap here and then fingerprint. I could install a new app here. I guess. Let's install this one. I always like to install this one. I never want to verify purchases with fingerprint. Always use password. And they like to do this with a... Um, they they like to make it so you have to enter the password it's much easier to do it with the fingerprint but i will use password like this you have to remember the password every time i guess this was the part i'm i'm not gonna go that far to to use the fingerprint to verify purchases no no okay so this is your private space there you could have your contacts and the private apps will have this lock icon on them. You can even change the settings. You can change the private space pin. Or you can even delete the private space. You can lock the private space automatically when the device locks. Or 15, 5 minutes after screen timeout. 
or at restart. It's interesting, but I will show you also how to delete the private space because I wouldn't, I don't want to use it. It's really, I don't, I don't see the point. I have the phone with the fingerprint, it's locked. And if I want to have a separate space, I would use a separate phone. If I wanted to have a private space, a separate space, I would use a second phone, a separate phone that is not connected to the other phone completely. And like this, you never know really when there is an update and it's going to change things and then it's some, something stops working. So to delete the private space, I will have to enter the pin code of the private space when I created it, not the code of the phone. So it's the code of the phone, not the code of the phone, the code of the private space. So I enter the code of the private space and interesting, even, even, even if I don't have a private space, it will always show even if I don't have a private space set up, it will still show this icon here. So actually this is a good security settings. Actually this is, even if I don't have a private space now, it will still show the private space option here. So it's a good security option this, that you don't really know if the phone has a private space or not by looking here. I verify, I verify with the private space. I verify with the private space and it's still there. What? I don't know. I thought I deleted it, but let's try again. Delete private space. Delete. Okay, I'll do it again. So continue. Now the private space is finally deleted. And you would know if someone has a private space set up if they have this on the app drawer. When you pull up the apps like this, at the bottom of the screen here, if you see the private option, if you see something here that says private space, it means there is a private space set up on the phone. And if it's yours, you know what about it. If it's not yours, then you should ask whoever gave you the phone or uh, find out, maybe do a phone reset, just to make sure there are no other accounts set up on your phone. That's it. I hope this helped you in some way. And actually it's a nice option to have, but I really suggest if you want to have a private space, if you want to have a private space, especially for banking applications, it's better to use a separate phone. Keep the regular apps or your uh, games or whatever you use in one phone and for banking apps, use another phone. I use everything on one phone because of convenience. I really try not to install any apps that I don't really know that they're from a trusted source. And um, also the each app has permissions to what it can access and I really try not to give full access to the contacts or to the storage to any apps. But you know, these days it's very difficult to actually restrict access to phones, to apps. There's always a fine, there's always a hard balance between the convenience and the safety security features. This is how we, this is the way we live now. You need to have a bit of convenience. You give some data, like on Google Maps, for example, I really like it when I see the traffic information, but I believe that they use the traffic information from other phones to see where, like how fast each everyone moves. So we know we can use each other's data to know about traffic jams and everything. If you know how Google Maps works, let me know, because I think this is how it works. Thanks for watching.